In this week's release from IHME, uh, we have made a major change in how we think about uh, the number of deaths that have occurred from COVID. We have completed an analysis of uh, all-cause mortality uh, for 59 countries and or uh, 198 states and provinces within countries. And using all that data, we have looked at excess mortality. And then we've tried to relate excess mortality as a metric to get closer to the true number of uh, COVID deaths. And there are some, clearly there's um, other things that go into excess mortality. For example, uh, people have avoided healthcare and so that might have raised mortality from some causes. Uh, there's an increase in depression uh, that we know about, increase in drug use in some countries, and that has raised deaths from those potentially. We know injuries are down, perhaps about 5% globally due to reductions in mobility. We know that flu deaths and RSV deaths are down globally because of uh, lockdowns. Uh, and we also know that when there was an intense uh, death rate from COVID, then in the months afterwards, some frail individuals who died from COVID uh, didn't die from heart disease and chronic lung disease. When you put all that together, we conclude that the best way, uh, the closest estimate for the true COVID death is still excess mortality because some of those things are on the positive side. Some of those other factors are on the negative side. Once we do have completed this analysis, uh, our understanding of the magnitude of COVID up to date is that it's been much worse than we have been thinking so far. So we have estimated that to date, 6.9 million people have died from COVID already. And the top five nations in terms of deaths in order are the United States, where the number is now over 900,000 deaths, if you take into account the, the, the deaths that we haven't been counting correctly. After the US comes India with about 650,000 deaths. And then there's four countries that are very close to each other. Mexico comes in next, just over 600,000, and then Brazil around 600,000, and the Russian Federation also are just around about 600,000 deaths. And then you drop down to a much uh, next on the list uh, is the United Kingdom, which is a much smaller number. So you have five countries that make up a large fraction of the deaths globally. Uh, and that means that COVID really has already been, uh, you know, a, an extraordinary killer in the course of the pandemic so far. And then in our forecast now out to September 1st in this uh, week's release, we are forecasting the total COVID deaths based on that analysis. We will also, for those who are interested in consistency with the past, be giving in our online tools the reported deaths. Uh, or recorded deaths. But in terms of the totals, we expect that globally, there will still be considerable mortality between now and September, well over 2 million deaths expected with at least half of that in India alone. So the, our understanding of the epidemic is quite profoundly changed by this shift to looking at total COVID. And that's because the, the scalers, the scaling up of um, reported deaths to total COVID deaths is not uniform in the world. Uh, it's a function of testing. And it's also a function in some regions where the, the measured data tell us that the underreporting of deaths has been truly profound, particularly in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, but in a number of other countries as well. For example, Egypt, where uh, measured deaths from the all cause analysis are tenfold higher or more than the reported deaths. So our understanding of which countries have had major epidemics is changed by this shift and not just that the total number is much worse than we thought. A little more detail about how we go about trying to estimate excess mortality and then use that to get to total COVID deaths. So what we've done is we've looked at all those countries and subnational units, um, states in the United States, states in Brazil, states in Mexico as examples, 
uh, where we can get weekly or monthly deaths. Uh, and we can get those through the end of 2020, or even in some cases right through till March or April of this year. That set of countries where we have that information and we have weekly or monthly deaths back three, four, five years in the past, we can then use a variety of statistical methods to estimate uh, for 2020 and 2021 what the expected number of deaths would, would be based on seasonality and, and long-term trends. And then the difference is excess mortality. And so we've conducted that analysis. The countries are, you know, uh, the, the data is, uh, there's a lot of data for Europe and Eastern Europe, Western Europe. There's quite a lot of data in South America, Central America, North America. South Africa has data and even at the province level that we use uh, in the analysis. And then there are a, a few studies, places like Iran, some parts of India, where we also have these assessments of uh, the observed deaths compared to the expected deaths. Once we have those uh, numbers observed and expected, we have a measurement of excess mortality and then we can compare that to the data that we uh, have on reported COVID. And what we find is that that ratio, the true total COVID measured from excess mortality to reported COVID is very strongly related to how much testing each country has done. And that makes perfect sense. If you don't test very much, you're much more likely to miss COVID deaths um, in, in particular individuals and groups. So we've then taken those statistical relationships uh, where we have this relationship to testing. We also have a regional pattern where some regions like Eastern Europe and Central Asia have much higher ratios of total COVID to reported COVID. And then we've predicted these ratios for all the countries and, and regions where we don't have data. And that statistical modeling then allows us to make these estimates for likely total COVID deaths for every location that we include in the COVID modeling. These approaches have, are built up on the years of work that we've done at IHME in the Global Burden of Disease Project with our six and a half thousand collaborators in 155 countries around the world, building up our understanding of the data systems in each country and the types of adjustments that we need to make to their vital statistics and other sources. And so we are leveraging the many years of uh, global burden of disease work uh, to make these uh, assessments of uh, total COVID. 